Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I am super excited, truly super excited to be here with you tonight. Uh, I am so proud of, uh, who was here last Wednesday? Okay, if you were not here, I encourage you to go watch uh, our YouTube channel. But I was so proud of it because it was um, our team that got to preach. It was um, amazing to see what God is doing, how God is growing us in trusting in him. We just got back from Mexico. Um, my husband is not here tonight. We were there for seven days, actually. And we were in two cities. We were in Guadalajara. Uh, I don't know what they do, but it was, it was beautiful. I never went to Guadalajara, so it was beautiful. He was speaking to about 200 and so pastors. And then we went to Morelia, Michoacan. Woo-woo! If you know where that is, it's beautiful. And we didn't even know that there was a hur- hurricane there happening. I was so mesmerized by the, by the rain. I was like, thank you, Lord. I said, someone should have told me because I love rain boots. And uh, I had no idea that we were under the eye of the storm. But all that to say is that it truly, I believe that you go to a country and you think you're going to help someone. And at the end, it was the Lord speaking to me. The first night, everything was flooded uh, when we got to Morelia. I think the water was up to here. The, every street was, um, I mean, people couldn't get there. And then we told the pastors, um, as we told the pastor, maybe we have to cancel. We, we, the rain is heavy. And it's like, no, people are texting us. They're coming. They're coming. And all of them got there. Do you understand? All of them got there. And they were all soaking wet. I mean, everything up to here was wet. And I thought, I have never seen so people so hungry, so hungry. And it rains here in California, and no one knows how to drive. Everybody forgot how to think, and we stay home. So I was really blessed to see them. They never stopped coming. They never made an excuse. They never, and these are people taking buses, coming from work. So it was, we had an amazing time. And, and while I was there, I, was, I, I felt like God was just... I was praying for you guys and, 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 and seeing how God is growing us. And I believe that God is growing us. And, and the last series that I did was, you got to live, right? Remember? For those who were here, a few of you, thank you. You got to live. God wants us to live a life that is worthy of his name. And as I was in uh, meditating, because I thought, you know what? I'm just going to meditate this week. Remember I told you that we need to meditate. We need to give thanks to God for everything that God has done. And while I'm talking, because I'm going everywhere, I want you to go Matthew 22, 37 and 39. But I was thinking about the goodness of God. And my title tonight is, How You Doing? Remember Joy Triviani? I don't know how to say it, but I wish I could say, How you doing? There you go. There you go. How you doing? To your heart. To your heart. As, as I was there looking at all these people coming, not because it was a storm, it was a hurricane, and they knew it. And they made no excuse to get there just to hear the word of God. And as I continued talking to them, a few days later, some said, you know what, I didn't even have money for, for, for the bus I just believe that I, I went out, I work all day, and someone stopped, and they gave me a ride. And they were so excited. I mean, they told me, like, with, with the good, you know, with the good attitude. They didn't say, you know, I didn't have money, and, and, but I got here, first Jesus. And no, it was like, I got here, and God allowed. And you should have seen this person. He was drenched. I was trying to cover my hair. All I said, protect my hair, Lord. I don't care getting wet, but, I, but these people were just like so hungry. And I thought, my God, what a heart. What a heart after God's own heart. And then I thought about my life and where I've been in the, in the last 22 years. I've been, this December, I'm turning 22. So don't ask me how old I am. I am 22 years old. 
if you want to know, multiply it times two plus three. There you go. Yeah. Oh no, I gave myself too many already. See when you don't know math. But I was, I was, I was meditating on the goodness of God. And I, and I remember those people. And I remember my journey in the last two years, so almost two years. And, and it's been a wonderful journey of awakening and experiencing things that I never thought I would experience. And, and I heard God tell me, how are you doing, Virginia? I was like, me? You're asking me? He says, how, how's your heart today? I was like, oh. My heart is content. Liar. So the Lord told me, my children are afraid to confront their hearts. I believe that God wants us to live a life that is so full of joy. But joy is not happiness. Joy is not something that comes from the external. Joy is within because the joy of the Lord is your strength. He has called us to, to get up every morning and confess the word of God and declare the word of God and not live by what the heart is holding. And today I want to talk about your heart, the condition of your heart. How is your heart doing tonight? Where is your heart? You know, people say, follow your heart. Never follow your heart. Never follow your heart. It's, it's, a, it's a very good sentiment. It's a good song. It makes great records or whatever they call it now. <laughs> However, we are never to follow our heart. We are to follow Jesus. And Jesus is the word. So I'm going to go everywhere. I know I, I told you to go Matthew 22, 37, but I just changed my mind. <laughs> That's how I am. Proud of it. I want you to know why we need to keep our heart right. And it, let us go to Jeremiah 17, nine, uh, verse 9 and 10. Why do we need to keep our heart? How do you, why do you need to ask your heart every day? Not, not once a month. We don't, we don't guard our heart. We don't check our heart once a month. I do it weekly. No, you do it daily. Daily. And this is why we have to do it daily. Jeremiah 17, are you there? It says, the heart is deceitful. Do you know that your heart is deceitful? You know what it means? It means fraudulent, fake, dishonest, untrue, false, counterfeit. Your heart right now can be leading you in the wrong direction because the heart is so deceitful if we don't take care of it, if we don't keep it in according to his word. And it says, above all things, and desperately wicked. I'm like, I'm, you, you're probably thinking right now, you know, my heart is not wicked. What are you talking about? I'm going to tell you what wicked means. It means malignant. Position to be sick at ease. Easily wounded. Easily offended. Do you know that that's wicked? To be frail. And you want to follow your heart. And I want to follow my heart. If I follow my heart, this church wouldn't exist. If the worship team would follow their heart, they wouldn't sing with all of their faith that they have. If we as Christians would follow their heart, we follow our hearts, we wouldn't do nothing for God. Because we would be waiting for the feeling to be in alignment with God. Our feelings will not align first. Our faith has to align and then feelings will align with God. Amen. It says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind. The most secret parts. He knows your secrets. He knows your darkest places. You're thinking, you're, you know, no one knows this. Oh, yes, someone in the one that matters knows it, and that is God. Even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doing. So, point number one. I don't give points. I'm just kidding. <laughs> put, put a, pull a point. Why do I need to check on my heart? Because according to the word is the most deceitful and liar and fraudulent. And he can be leading us into the wrong direction. And yet with the same heart, God asked us and said, Jesus said in Matthew 22, 37, says, Jesus replied, this is Jesus, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. That's a lot of all. 
Can I love the Lord just with 30% of my heart? 30% of my mind and my soul? I'll give you 20, Lord. It says, love the Lord with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul. And this is the first and greatest commandment. And it's a commandment that we need to love God. And it says, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. You know that the world, it's in need of love. The body of Christ is such a need of love. But I believe that when we talk about guarding our hearts, and now you can go to my other verse, which is in Proverbs 4.23. I'm, I'm sure you know it by heart, which is keep your heart with all diligence for out of it springs the issues of life. And the other translation says this, guard your heart more than anything else because the source of your life fl flows from it. Do you know that everything, do you know that wherever we are in life right now, it has to do with our heart because out of it flows my life? Your life, everything, wherever you are in life today, when you go to work, you take your heart. When you go shopping, you take your heart. When you go home, you take your, your heart. When you go to church, you take your heart. It follows. It's whatever we have inside is going to decide how are we going to live life. And then we think about the song, the achy, breaky heart, right? And we sing about songs of, of uh, and these are not Christian songs, of course, you know. Um, break my heart. Remember the songs? <laughs> you see why I don't know how to sing? The Lord didn't give me that. <laughs> Say you love me again. <laughs> and we love those songs. And he, and, and, he, and he transports us to another time when we were in so much pain. <laughs> and we're like, <laughs> Welcome, welcome memories, memories. And I, because I think of songs, I just go from one song to another, to another, to another. And then God corrects me, killing me softly. <laughs> or you just sing songs over me and you use the secular songs. But what I'm saying as I sat there, I thought, you know what? I need to deal with my heart. And God wants us to prosper in all things. I'm going to give you all the scriptures first so then I can talk. <laughs> Let's go to 3 John. Come on, how you doing? Let's go. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Do you know the soul means right there? It is The soul right there is intertwined, right? You are a mind. I mean, we are a spirit, body, and what? Soul. soul. But our soul is, is intertwined with our heart and our mind. And then we talk about the heart, right? And we're like, you know, like people say, I love you. And we take love in the heart like nothing. You know, now emojis, we emoji everything. Sometimes I get texts. I don't know what they're saying because it's a heart. Then a girl dancing. Then like, <laughs> praise the Lord. You don't even know what they're saying. <laughs> we love everything. We love chocolate. We love, we, so we feel like we're good with her. I am so good with my heart. I, I, I love people from far, but I love them. And we think we're guarding our hearts because we are keeping people away. But do you know that in that verse, if you study John and those times, people were being burned to death. And he's saying during, the, during your painful times, you should be prospering. Your body should be prospering. Your soul should be prospering. And you should be prospering all things. Wait a minute. I just told you that everyone is getting killed. Everybody's being persecuted. Everybody is in distress. And yet I am supposed to prosper in that season of my life. Do you know that you will know you're prospering is in during those seasons when you're being squeezed, when your life is being squeezed. And I thought to myself, you know what? I have to check my heart. What is it in my heart? And then I understood because the, the word of God, when we come and you give your life to Jesus Christ, you know that the moment that you say, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Do you know that's the moment God made a covenant? That's the moment the Holy Spirit gives breath into your own spirit. That's the moment my spirit, your spirit gets in perfect alignment with his spirit. And we are one going to heaven. And we have the ticket, the golden ticket. And you are I'm saved. Because salvation is free. It's not cheap. But it's free. 
because it cost God something. He sent his only son to die for you and I so he can carry our sorrow, so he can carry our sickness, so we can overcome. He sent our, his son, Jesus, so we can live life. And the Lord said, Virginia, because I was having a conversation with God. You know, when you have a conversation with God because he asked you to check your heart and you're like, you know what? I should be asking you, why did you allow A, B, C, and D? Salvation, do you know that salvation doesn't guarantee your prosperity in soul and your prosperity and your prosperity in your soul and your heart? It doesn't guarantee you renewing your mind. That's you and my responsibility. But we want God to do everything. I want God to be the keeper of my heart. I want God to remove feelings. He can remove feelings. They're your feelings. Because everything that people talk to us, they're seeds, they're seeds. You know that every, everything the Lord says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth, what? So why are we talking about? And, and sometimes people get it all confused, like, okay, so when somebody asks you, how are you doing? I'm doing good, praise the Lord. That's not guarding your heart. That's not keeping your words. No, I'm not talking about that. It's keeping. It's what do you do? What, what is it that we're not hitting, hitting uh, places or things or circumstances that we live day to day and we need to confront them every day? What do you do when someone offends you? Offenses will come, but guarding your heart is how are you going to navigate life? To be able to have a prosperous life on this earth. And the Lord said to me, no, no, it's because you have, you have it all scrambled there. My salvation doesn't guarantee your prosperity in your soul. That's up to you. I have given you every tool. I have given you my spirit. Salvation is free. Deliverance is free. Mercy is free. We don't deserve it. Grace is free. Forgiveness is free. That's all free because it's part of salvation. But then he says, we, you and I must renew our what? He says, renew your mind. He didn't say, Virginia or oh, Jessica, I will renew your mind. No. You have the responsibility to renew your mind. Many of us are so stuck. I've been stuck in my life. I've been mad at God. In 22 years, you know, of my youthful self, I've been in seasons of my life that I've been mad at God. Have you ever been mad at God? Because something happened. It should have not happened. There's things that should have never happened to you. And that's not your responsibility, but your responsibility is how you're going to guard your heart because of what happened to you. My responsibility is to renew my mind because of what happened to me. It's our responsibility. No one wants responsibilities. I wish there was a lineup or I could hear a preacher that say, you know, today we are, we are going to pray. And then we're, the moment I touch your head, your mind is renewed. In Jesus' name, you are a different woman. Tonight, we're giving new hearts. Well, that's up to you. Do you want a new heart? No, but God said that he was giving me a new heart. Uh, yeah, because he offers it. Every day we can be renewed. Every day we have the choice to guard. To, and to guard, it means like, and, and I did the study. It's like you're in a prisoner. Well, you're not the prisoner, but it's like you are guarding it with that, with that diligence. Like you're on the, on the lookout. You're watching that nothing that shouldn't be going in should be going in. And nothing that should be coming out of it should be coming out of it. And I thought, how did I get here? How, how did I get here being mad at God? And I'm not talking about 10 years ago. I'm talking about last year. I'm talking about some of this year. And the Lord says, because you didn't guard your heart. You didn't guard your heart. How do you guard your heart? The only way to guard your heart is with the word of God. There is the only way to guard your heart. I wish we are so good at, at guarding or keeping people's heart. Have you noticed that? 
you're so good at telling somebody is off. Like, oh, you know what? That person is off. You know, that they don't have a heart. They don't have a good heart. Who are you to say that they don't have a good heart? Do you know? Do you know that they don't have a good heart? Do you search hearts? Do you know all things? And I think it's because we have allowed, words are powerful. Words are powerful. And you and I have the power to change the destiny of our lives by keeping our heart right in alignment with God. You and I, nobody likes that. This is not a popular message. But I believe that God wants to convict his people like, where are you? Where is your faith? You know, we think this is the heart, right? This is the heart. Guard your heart and, and guard your, you know, like my, my responsibility. And John says, you know what? He says, I, beloved, I wish that you prosper in all things. Well, we cannot prosper in all things if our heart is not prosper because out of our heart flows my life. He says, and I pray that your body prospers as well. Do you think that we just pray today and we say, in Jesus' name, Father, I thank you. I was in Mexico and I did not restrain myself. Eating good tacos. You know, when you're in Mexico, you have to do Mexican food. And I just happened to love it. One night they took me out. I ate eight tacos. <laughs> and I wanted more. And I'm not kidding you. I was the only one. I ate eight tacos. And they said, do you want some more? I do want more, but I'm not going to have more. <laughs> because I cannot say it's my responsibility to be healthy. is to be in good health, right? So if I want to be in good health, I'm going to go to the doctors. I have to exercise. I have to eat good. I have to take supplements. I can't just pray and eat like a maniac while in Mexico and then pray as I were flying and pray, Lord Jesus, I thank you that every pound that I gain, <laughs> Father, in this moment, you're burning the the fat. I declare these tacos are gone by the time I arrive at LAX because that's my promised land. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father, that I'm speaking. These muscles are being built. These legs are not swollen because I ate too much sodium because they had a lot of seafood and I couldn't say no to the seafood. I declare my body healthy, my heart is strong, my liver is this. You know what? You're kidding yourself. Your own heart is deceiving you. Yeah. I thought, my gosh, I need to get back in there. I need to work out. I need to take my supplements. I need to like, this is the temple. This is the temple. Without the temple, there is no nothing. Without this body, we can't go places. Without this voice, we can't speak to others. Without this vehicle, we can't do nothing. And God said, I want you to prosper in all things and be in health. When I was in Mexico, my feet were, well, this one was so swollen. And I think something bit me. Everywhere I go, something bits me. I thought, you know what, I'm going to be smart. Because I can be, you know, praying, Lord, take away all the spiders. And you know what? Michoacan has a lot of spiders. And they have, like, scorpions. That's what they're called, right? Scorpions. And they love me. <laughs> like, they find me. So this time I was like, oh, smart. I want to protect myself. And I, I didn't look good, but I put socks. Like, like you're not biting me. But I had already gotten bitten, so it was really swollen. And they said, it always happens to you. Something bites you. Something always bites you. And I was looking at my leg, and I started declaring and declaring and declaring. And, and then, you know, and I, there was a doctor there, and he's like, you know what? What you need to do is put it in hot water. You pray, but go do what you need to do. Because you have, like, he, he, there is, like, an infection going there, going on. Wisdom. I have to renew my mind. He said, no, and he's a Christian man. He's like, oh, no, we're going to pray, but then that looks pretty bad because it was growing and going up. And he already had 
been two days and I was just praying like, okay, Lord, you know, in the name of Jesus, this is this bruise. And it was getting like really, I don't know, color. So I don't know what color it was. <laughs> Until I showed, I decided to show it to my husband. and said, what, what do you see here? He's like, what happened to you? Like, whoa, started with the little thing and now it's big and it's growing. And I said, what color is it? It's, he said, it was purple and red. And I was like, whoa, that must be beautiful. But for today, I was like declaring in Jesus' name, this is going down. And I was, ah, ah. you know what I was doing? Whatever toxins were even moving, I was moving them and I was doing things that I shouldn't have been doing. Because I, I, I want to do it. Sometimes we want to treat a problem just with prayer when a problem needs to be solved by keeping my heart right and by renewing my mind. Why are we learning? Virginia, think. Think. So on the third day, I got the medication. He says, well, God really loves you because by then it was really high. And I was like, and because it was the rain, they said, did you get in water? Was the water? Because it's, you know, the, the rivers came out and it was quite a sight. So I'm like, no, no, I don't think so. But sometimes we're trying to solve our problems. And we bring it all into the spirit. No, the spirit's in alignment. The, the, the spirit's always willing. The problem is we have, a, we have a side that is the carnal side, right? We have an enemy that is the, that is, it's the devil. And then we have our own opinion and what the people have said. Or we have been accustomed and there's things in your heart that you don't give access to God. I told the Lord, why, why, why was I so angry at you if I can say that let's be honest you want freedom say it have you been angry to God go tell him he already knows we fake it we don't only fake it to ourselves to other people but we think God doesn't know okay Lord I just don't want to talk to you I don't know what is keeping you from your healing I don't know what's keeping you from your deliverance I don't know what's keeping you from your destiny but I bet you it's your heart it's your heart. Out of the abundance of your heart, the mouth speaks. And we need to value what God has given us. God has given us every tool. We have the word of God, and we can put Hebrews 4. We have the word of God. And I assure you that many of us here, I assure you that we don't read our Bibles every day. I assure you. And if we do, we take it casually. All right, I'm going to read one chapter. And I'm not saying this so you can feel shame or you can feel like, oh, my God, what is she talking about? No, I'm talking. I'm, I, I'm asking you to wake up. I'm asking you and telling you that the year is not over. One day I said to my, I, I told the Lord that day as he was dealing with my heart, I said, you know what I want? Lord, I want to make decisions that are driven by eternity. Every day you need to wake up and you need to do a checkup before you leave your house. How are you doing? How is my heart doing? Have I allowed any bitterness? Have I allowed any unforgiveness? Have I allowed whatever? We allowed all these things in our heart. And there are some people who say, you know, I haven't allowed anything. I think I'm pretty good. Do you know that the heart, when you see, what, what is the heart in, in the Hebrew? Or I think it's in the Greek. It says, is the seat of your feelings. That's where the heart is. And in our brain, because the heart is not really to talk about this heart, this is the part of our heart. Do you know that? It's, this is the seat of our feelings. It's right here in back of our brain. And our mind is right here. So it's all intertwined. So what is it that you have stored and you're keeping in your heart that needs to get out? Maybe you don't even know, but you're, you're bitter. Maybe you don't even know, but forgiveness has, it's eating you. I mean, it's poison. Maybe you don't know, and some people feel that they're good because they said, you know what, I don't feel anything because we are, it, I was talking to uh, someone, I'm not going to give names, but I was talking to this person, and she said uh, to me, it was a she because we we're so beautifully complex, right? She said, you know what, I am good with my heart. She was saying, sharing something with me, and it's not from this church, okay, so don't even... Who would that be? Who was she talking? No, there was no one from here. But I was talking to this person, and, and 
she, and then she said, you know, I am good. I am good with my heart. And I said, well, everything that you are saying, every symptom that you're telling me, I, I think that's an issue of the heart because everything flows out of it. So it has to be, we have to go back to the root of it and the root of it is going to be found in your heart. And she said, no, 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 no. She said, I live by faith. So, and I said, well, if you live by faith, then why are we talking about what we're talking about? It doesn't add up. And she said, no, I know. And I said, well, maybe. I said, you just need to confront those issues, which are those feelings. You need to confront them. And she said, no, because I walk by faith. I don't walk by feelings. So I don't, I have decided years ago, because I'm a woman of God, that I'm, I have decided not to walk by my feelings, not to allow feelings in my heart. So I said, you decided to switch off your love then. And she said, uh, no. And I said, well, how do you know that it's not an issue of the heart? How do you know that you're doing well? And she said, I tell you why, because I don't allow myself to feel anything. And I said, okay, what does that mean? How does that feel? And she said, I am numb. Do you know that God doesn't want you to live numb? Do you know that God gives us a heart that is the seat of all of our feelings so we can feel? Isn't it good when you feel good? Isn't it good when you feel energy? Isn't it, isn't it powerful when you feel like you feel the presence of God and God comes and we know that he's, he is within us, that he comes and he says that he inhabits the praises of his people. When we're in worship, it is so, his presence is so tangible. Isn't it wonder that's part of your heart because we get to feel him. We don't see him, but we get to feel him. We sense his presence and it feels wonderful. But when you decide to shut off your feelings because Christians are afraid of feelings. They're afraid of emotions. No, because if I feel, then I'm not walking in faith. No, you have confused. You have confused. Your heart has deceived you. No, we are to feel. I'm not saying be led by your feelings. Everything. Today I'm happy. And then you tell everybody you're so happy. And then by the afternoon you're super sad. I'm not saying. I'm not talking about that. I am saying guarding. Guarding what was given to us. Guarding that we can say, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch on my heart. I'm going to give the keys to my heart to God. Did you guys put my scripture of Hebrews 4? Why we need the word of God? The only way to heal your heart is Jesus. You need to take every weight. What are you carrying tonight? How is your marriage? Let me ask you. How is your family? How are your friends? How do you do at work? Do people at work, do they, do they know that you're... A Christian because you guard your heart with all diligence and it, with all diligence means like I'm gonna do whatever it takes because if I don't guard my heart I'm not gonna do well in this life the only way is through the Word of God it says for the Word of God is living and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the division of soul and spirit it's only the word of God who's going to examine you and it's going to tell you the state of your heart. But you have to know and you have to tell yourself, I'm going to read the word of God knowing that it's searching me. I'm not reading the word for so and so. I'm not reading the word to post it on social media because this scripture will help someone else. No, you would put the scripture because it's helping you. I want to put a scripture today because I'm guarding my heart against gossip and I know so many gossipers. Today, I'm guarding my heart and I'm going to help others. And then you put a scripture and you're like poking someone else. No, no, guarding your heart, it means your heart. I can't guard my husband's heart. He can't guard my heart. I can't guard my kid's heart. That's their responsibility. But you know what? The Word of God has the power to come and divide and tell us, you know what? This is a soul issue. This is a spirit issue. There's people that are still fasting for 20 days. I remember when my days, I used to fast for something that it needed to be dealt with me renewing my mind. And you cannot renew your mind without the Word of God. But no, I refuse to read the Word of God. But I'm praying and I'm fasting. But okay, that doesn't go. 
It doesn't add up. No, if you want to renew your mind, if you want to relearn the way that you view life, then I need the word of God because it is able to divide, to tell me, okay, this is a soul issue, Virginia, and this is a spirit issue. You're being attacked by the enemy. Yes, it's time to fast and to pray. And I'm not saying do not pray. Prayer is a part of our lifestyle as a child of God. I'm saying sometimes we're trying to solve everything by prayer. With prayer. I wouldn't say by prayer. With prayer and fasting. When it is your responsibility or whatever issue you're dealing with because you allowed it in your heart. And he says, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of thoughts and an intents of the heart. The other one. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Do you know that we are going to give an account of our heart? You're going to go and then you're going to get to heaven and you're going to be, well, my blood pressure in, well, it was on earth, was, I don't know, what's the, what's the best, uh, do you know that perfect number for blood pressure? 120 over 80. 120 over 80. You would be so happy getting to heaven. Dun, 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 dun. And angels, and you're like, oh, you know, like ready for my crown. <laughs> report of your heart. Lord, I'm here to report my heart on earth. 120 over 80. I kept it, Lord. You said to run the race. I run every day on that threat mill. I kept, you see this tent, look at me, look at the beauty that you created. <laughs> and the Lord's going to say like, who's behind you? Who did you bring with you? Who did you impact? Who was changed? Who was transformed because of your life? Because you kept your heart with all diligence. Because you didn't allow your heart to get embittered. Because you didn't allow your heart to be angry. Because you dealt with whatever issue came. You dealt with betrayal. You dealt with, you dealt with disappointment. With, with, you dealt with hopelessness. You dealt with whatever. And you were able to navigate it with me. You know what I want? I want my kids to say one day, you know, I know where my mom has been. I know my mom. I have seen my mom at my worst. But one thing I can tell you is that my mom was able to keep her heart clean. That's what I want. Not only for my kids. I'm thinking I need to live my life driven by eternity. If I want to live a legacy, when I talk about living a legacy, I'm not talking about here, here, Alexis, I'm leaving you the church. Here are the, all the problems. <laughs> No, I want to live a legacy that they will know, that they will know, that they will know that I was, I took seriously my God and my salvation and the freedom that he gave me. I want my kids to talk to their kids and say, you know, I saw my mom in 2018 and she was a mess. And let's not talk about 2017. I didn't recognize her. But one thing I can tell you on my mom. One thing I can tell about your grandma, I'm not going to be one of those glammy, nah, call me grandma. <laughs> I'm like, tch, tch. the kids are like, what do you want them to call me? You know what? I am so proud. If my kids will have kids, call me abuela. <laughs> grandmama. <laughs> Nana. Call me that. But I have a purpose. I want to say, mi abuela. La que casi perdió la... I want to almost lost her mind. She made a choice one day and she decided to dealt with her heart. And she decided to stop blaming the world and stop being mad at God. And she decided to give her title deed of her heart to her God. And she made changes. And she was a woman of the word. That was your grandma, your abuela your grandmother and then those kids are going to tell their grandkids i mean their kids my great grandkids and they're going to talk about their abuelita <laughs> mi abuelita virginia that she used to love tacos and everything <laughs> that woman that ran her race because she kept her heart right do you know that it's it takes bravery to check your heart to confront your issues. 
I don't want the church numb. The, the Bible wants his body to be awakened. Do you know in order to search your heart and keep your heart right, do you know that you need to die to so many places? You need to die to your dignity for women and for your men. You need to die to your ego. Because we call it dignity, right? Women, don't you love that? It's like my dignity has been. <laughs> and the men, will, of course, you men, you won't say it because it's too much for you. I don't know why you say. What do you guys say? Pride. You guys said that, my pride? Wow. <laughs> You know, I admire you. I admire you. Because it takes, it takes dealing with your heart, confronting to your heart to say, you know, it is my pride that's keeping me from, from, from getting the promises of God, from getting my, my marriage to be whole, for getting my kids to be whole. It's what's keeping me. It's pride. If our mothers say, it's because my dignity. But we talk about the dignity of the world. We're talking about the dignity of heaven. I want to impact my life. I want to live my life. And I mean, I told the Lord, I want to live from that day forward when he spoke to me. I said, I don't, it's not that I don't care what took place in my past or what people did to me. What I'm going to do is take responsibility in how I'm going to navigate my life. I'm going to keep my heart pure. And we sometimes we feel it's good because you know what? My heart is good. I haven't sinned. Really? You haven't. Liar. Someone calls you and you're like, you don't even like, you, you just go like that to your iPhone. Like, like pretend, like keep on ringing so they don't think I'm here. And they say, well, I called you today. <gasps> I missed your call. <laughs> Sorry, I missed your call. You have done it. Liar. The heart, it's a liar. We're like, no, I keep it right. I, 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 you don't understand. I just encourage people on Facebook. God has given me the platform. I, shut up. You just put in things that you want other people to read because you're dealing with that or, or you think someone's dealing with that. And we're talking all this nonsense and... And you know that every word, we're going to give an account of every word that comes out of our mouth. Because where does a word come from? Someone, please tell me. Yeah, so this is what we do. For many years, I felt very, very, I was so like super proud of myself because I was like, I'm going to watch what I say. Right? Because my whole life, before, if I said something, you know, this is before Jesus Christ. So everything, you know that every word is a seed? So this is what you, oh my God, this is going to be disgusting. If you're disgusted, just close your eyes, okay? Now that. So I have feet. Every day we have feet in our mouth. We're like, let me put them to the side. It's easy to talk like that. Do not zoom in and then I'm going to look like I just got a... But every day you wake up and your heart is ready to overflow. Because out of it flows your life, right? So you go to work and you're like, how are you doing today? <laughs> I hate those people. <laughs> I hate this job. My boss sucks. <laughs> you go home or you come from a trip and your house is messy. No, just kidding. Just kids don't do nothing. If I'm not here, this will die. You go to church and somebody's like, Miss Church is like, can't stand that person. They have a, they don't have a good heart. Everywhere we go, we're planting. We're planting seeds. Everywhere. And he says, he says that you're going to, Jesus said, you know what? Well, out of the abundance of the heart, it's going to out of the treasure, right? You have a treasure. Treasure's your heart. And then you go around, like, we're like, plop, plop. And then one day we just like, oh, Lord, no crop failure, crop failure. I don't care how much you call it crop failure. He, he says that you're going to receive what you have sown. Then we can say, Lord, have mercy. Please forgive me. Have mercy on us. You can't call it crop failure. 
he would be going against his word. But before I used to think that, you know what? I'm going to watch what I say. I'm not going to be one of those people. I'm not going to say anything. So you know what we do? Our thoughts. These are seeds without their, the shell, you know? Because you're eating them. You're chewing them. And they're good. Actually, these ones are like, Because you're pretending. Your heart is deceiving you. I'm a good person. I'm going to go to work. And then when your boss says, how you doing, Virginia? I'm doing good. Praise Jesus. <laughs> You go to church and then, you're, and then you're like, you're in a bad mood. And then people are like, are you okay? Of course I am. The Lord lives and I taste his goodness daily. Right? And then you go home and then you're like, you're having a day, you know. Like you're like, you go home and you already smell something. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I just. And then you see the dishes that like, no one did the dishes. But you're like, how you doing, Mom? We're so good to your back. <laughs> I'm so excited. You guys were waiting for me. The dishes were waiting. And then, okay, so I'm saying all the good stuff, right? But inside, this is what I have. I'm going to put it on my side. Because I'm eating them. Inside, I'm like, they couldn't even wash the dish. I'm going to chew it. Wow. And the husband gives you a kiss and... All oh, their clothes is on the side, shoes everywhere. You're like, <laughs> he can't even see a snake or a shedding everywhere. I like, said shedding with the D, right? Watch the, watch the, the, watch the accent. Shedding with the D. Did he live over this year? Like, is that for me to receive? Oh, but he kissed me, so. Oh, baby, I love you. Mom. And you're thinking, if you love me, you would pick up your shoes. <laughs> right? And then you go to work, right? And you're like, oh, because you're a Christian. Oh, my gosh. You have to, you have to look the part, right? See, we're eating our words. I'm like, okay, you, need, you did this project. If you Tell me if it's too much for you. Um, no. No, no, no. Of course it's not too much for me. Thank you for trusting me. And said like... Oh, can't even do it himself. Like, they always give me overtime. They don't even see what I'm doing. And see, you think you're keeping your heart because out of the mouth, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. But I'm going to tell you, that's what I did for many years. I just chewed on things. like Because <laughs> I'm a Christian, I learned how to smile, right? <laughs> you're like, they, people told me, say, laugh on the devil. <laughs> and so I was like, Crappy life? Is this what God called me to do? What? Is this my calling? Do you see what I'm saying? Do you see why the heart is so deceitful? This is so good. <laughs> I want to even give you more examples because I want to eat it. No, but I'm sorry. I picked, I picked this up because it has my saliva. Ugh. Oh, my God. But that's what we do. Everything. Jesus said, you're going to give an account in every idle word that you, that you spoke. Because words have life. There is life and death in the power of our tongue. And he says, those who eat of it will what? Someone know that scripture? If those who eat of it will have its fruit. So I don't know why you've been planting. I don't know why you've been pretending not to plant. But you actually already digest it and it's already in your heart. And I thought to myself, you know, I've been pretty good at keeping this. I, I am very good at doing this ones. So, you know, I'm going to watch, you know. But this ones, no one sees this ones. No one hears this ones. But God does. He does. And then we get to a place and we don't know why we're in the place. Because we've been chewing and chewing and chewing on our memory. We've been chewing and chewing on an issue. And we think we have kept our heart right. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.